I'd say at least 200 people have sent me this video already, if not more. You've probably already seen it, but in case you haven't, check this out. It's horrifying. Now, let me be clear, I'm not posting this video because it went viral and I want attention. I promise I'm posting it for three different reasons. I've also been super sick and totally lost my voice, so that's why it sounds like I smoke crack for a living. All right, the first reason is so you guys will stop sending this to me. I've already seen that. And on a more serious note, reason number two is that dyno owners and the car owners, I think, need to see this. Uh, if both sides, the, the shop owners, the dyno owners, and the people who are you know, putting their cars on the dyno, if they're aware of how all of this stuff works, then they can double check what's going on. And obviously two sets of eyes uh, is a lot better than one and making sure that this never happens again. And reason number three is I've seen people making comments that they never want to put their car on a hub dyno again after watching this. And uh, that's just kind of crazy to me. Uh, this whole situation here was 100% user error and completely preventable. The shop that did this even, you know, took accountability that this was their fault. But hub dynos just in general, and I guess in my opinion, I would say are probably like a million percent safer than roller dynos. For every hub dyno video like this, and honestly, I think this is the first one I've ever really seen this like it. Uh, there's probably 10,000 different videos of cars flying off of roller dynos when straps break. And when you look at how cars are actually mounted to hub dynos, it's pretty obvious that they're safer. And as long as you don't forget the basics like installing the torque arms. Now, just in general, dynos are extremely safe when operated correctly but things can happen. So you got to be on top of everything and have some safety checks in place and uh, make sure that you're doing everything that you need to do. I can confidently say that I've saved customers probably well over a million dollars by catching issues on the dyno. And this is especially true with like new cars that haven't made it out yet. But essentially by catching issues on the dyno, that word have turned into like a fiery explosive car crash at the racetrack. And you can't change my mind on this. It's just happened over and over and over again. It's been a little bit of time on a dyno, you know, depending on the power levels of hub dyno before taking a brand new car to the racetrack. It's just no matter what it costs, I think it's just totally invaluable. Okay, so the main problem and what caused everything to go really, really bad in this video, and you can see them here on the floor. They are bright yellow. Uh, these are the torque arms, or ironically, what I've always referred to as the anti kickflip arms. Uh, they're just kind of hanging out on the floor. So obviously, this is accidental but given how big and bright and yellow they are uh, they you know, and where they're laying in the video they probably got tripped over 20 different times while they were setting the car up and getting everything ready to go so it's kind of crazy that nobody was like hey maybe we should you know put these things on there everyone makes mistakes <laughs> And I think this is a big part of why I want to mention this because the shop owner, he's probably running around, got a hundred different things to do. But you as the car owner, if you happen to see these laying on the floor and your car is on the dyno, then, you know, speak up. Be like, hey, don't we need these? So these bright yellow bars here, uh, these are what were not installed on the dyno when they were making those runs. I'm sure there's a power level where they're maybe not necessary, but I've gotten in the habit of installing them on every car, every power level. And I just kind of have like a whole routine that I go through on every car uh, just to make sure that these uh, are not forgotten because as you can tell they are extremely important. Now on one hand you would think if they're that important that they wouldn't be removable but as you can see they just slide out uh, but it does make it extremely convenient to be able to wheel the dynos around store them and things like that so uh, the other thing that's important I guess to mention is you can run these dynos both ways. Like I can pull a car in this way or I can pull a car that way. And when you do that, you need to switch uh, the direction that the arm is going. Uh, so again, being able to pull them out to switch like that is uh, huge convenience and I would hate to not have that option. Uh, the ironic part about that is ever since day one of getting these particular dynos, I always just sort of thought that it would be cool if, you know, there's a big opening in here. Uh, so I always thought it would be cool if there was some sort of a, a sensor, uh, you know, think of like a reverse switch in your transmission or something like that. Uh, basically something that could tell that the arm was in or out. And if the arm was not in there, then the dyno would prevent you from being able to make runs. 
but I'm sure there's people that are running these things on three, four, 500 horsepower cars that probably never installed the arms. But as you can see, once you get to a certain power level, you're not gonna wanna run without them. And uh, I just would hate to see people accidentally, you know, not know that they're gonna exceed that power level and gearing plays a huge role in it. So somebody has a super aggressive gear set in their transmission or something like that, uh, you could run into similar issues. Now I'm sure there's some of you that are probably wondering why all of the different mainline models don't have the tracks if they're you know so much safer from preventing the car from flipping over. Well, the tracks, uh, as, as great as they are on the huge power stuff, uh, they do make the setup of the car on the dyno significantly harder and they take away the portability factor entirely. And the big dyno, they used to refer to them as a 6,000 horsepower. I don't know if they changed that or not, but they're they're gigantic, they're huge, they take up a ton of space and they're just not practical for most people. You'd actually be kind of surprised how many people initially purchase the larger size dyno and then eventually sell that and then downgrade to the smaller sized units just because uh, they're so much easier to work with, so much easier to store. And I think unless you're regularly working on 5,000 horsepower cars, uh, the big dyno is just overkill for most people. So there are three models of the mainline Pro Hub dynos. You have this one over here that is the little model that handles the least amount of power and torque. Uh, then you have these over here that are the middle range, uh, which obviously handle more power and torque than those. And then you have the big model that you've probably seen at places like Fuel Tech. And uh, they're essentially two of these mid-range ones kind of together. Uh, uh, they're huge and uh, the small one and the middle one uh, both have the yellow arms uh, but you'll see on the big one there is no yellow arms as those are big and huge uh, they're twice as much weight to try and do a kickflip with it's still doable though uh, but those units actually mount to a track that's mounted to the floor so you don't have to worry about the yellow arms on the big unit but on the middle and the small unit you do so hopefully uh, this is a once in a lifetime thing that happened hopefully all of the shop owners are doing what they need to do to ensure that these yellow arms make it onto each car before you start making runs but if you're considering putting your car onto a mainline dyno, I just want you to be aware of these yellow arms and you know, double check, go back behind uh, the dyno operator and just make sure that these arms are in place uh, so that you know, your car doesn't have the same problem as you saw in that video. So when I purchased my dyno, I kind of had the option of, of buying the bigger model or the one that I did buy with the removable arms. And there's maybe been one or two times where maybe I wish I had the bigger one, but uh, for most of the stuff that I do, again, the portability, uh, the easy use, the space, it takes up everything like the the removable torque arm models are significantly easier to work with now i don't know exactly what the shop did or didn't do since the video isn't long enough to show all of the details but whether they did or didn't do this again i don't know but here are some things that i do to try to prevent kind of anything bad from happening so basically since day one whenever i've run a car on the dyno which i've been doing for essentially half my life at this point i've always done a soft run first so for the turbo cars uh, you turn the boost all the way down nitrous cars obviously Obviously, you just don't turn the bottle on. The blower car is a little bit tougher because they can make tons of power and there's not a whole lot that you can do about it. But even then, we'll do a low RPM, kind of a soft as we can run uh, just to make sure that nothing goofy is going to happen. And personally, even though my dyno can handle the full power gear changes, I rarely do those unless there's a specific reason to do it. Uh, it just feels like sort of like unnecessary abuse to both the car and the dyno and the low gear torque multiplication makes the odds of something going south, you know, significantly higher, uh, especially if you haven't already, you know, done some high gear runs just to confirm everything is solid. I'm not sure you could convince me to set a car up and the very first pull, we're going to do max power, gear change, launch, all of that stuff. Like I'm going to baby step into that if I'm going to do it. Now, problem number two isn't talked enough about in this video or just the countless amount of other dyno videos that I see, but why in the world is that guy standing right there? All things considered, he's extremely lucky that he didn't get really hurt in this kind of ordeal. And even if the dyno hadn't decided to day one song straight at him, if a drive shaft would have snapped, which happens all the time, or anything else went wrong, he could have like literally been cut in half. And before anybody calls me a little bitch or whatever for pointing this stuff out, uh, I had a friend years ago who actually died in a dyno accident and the details are very very gruesome. So yes, I probably take this stuff a little bit more seriously than a lot of other people do. To put this into perspective a little bit more, the guy inside the car is wearing a helmet, as you can see, and more than likely wearing a fire suit. But the guy standing six inches away with no car surrounding him to protect him or anything like that has literally zero safety anything. And on top of that, he doesn't even need to be there. It looks like he's holding the keyboard to trigger the dyno run, which is not needed. Uh, you can trigger the dyno runs automatically based off of a number 
number of user definable parameters within the Dyna software. I never use the keyboard to start runs. I set something up to trigger the run basically every single time. He's also using a wireless keyboard, which you can see, uh, which would work fine from outside of the shop entirely. Uh, I use my keyboard outside of the shop on a regular basis. So I know that that works pretty well. Now in this instance, he's using the keyboard. More often than not, when I see people standing in really stupid places around a dyno, uh, they almost always either have a phone or a camera in their hand, which is even more dumb because you're there for literally no reason. You're not even aiding in the car, being able to make the runs or anything like the guy with the keyboard was. Uh, so if you're gonna go to the dyno, it might be a good idea to invest in a $10, $20 tripod. Then you can set it up. You can stand two miles away, film the video and not die. Now, just to be clear, I don't know the shop. I don't know the people involved here. Uh, this isn't me talking shit, even though some of you somehow will take it that way. The shop involved here even pointed out that this was their fault by not installing the torque arms. But again, I wanted to break it down so that everybody could learn from it. And it's probably pretty safe to say that uh, they've learned their lesson from this situation. And I bet they checked to make sure that the torque arms are installed probably 10 times now before making any runs. I'm sure all of the shop owners with mainline dinos are going to take a little more precaution after seeing what can actually happen if you forget to put those arms on. Again, the point of this video is to make sure that everybody stays safe and most importantly to make sure that not only the shop owners but the actual customers who are putting their cars on the dyno can just take half a second and look and make sure that these yellow arms are in place before anybody actually makes a run on the dyno keep everybody safe keep everybody alive and then you know also for those of you that said that you're scared to put your car on a hub dyno after watching this I mean, that's just kind of silly this is like a one in a million type of a thing uh, there is far greater chance of a strap breaking on the dyno or you getting hit by a bus walking down the street this isn't something that you're going to see on a regular basis so i don't think you have anything to worry about obviously safety is the most important thing it doesn't matter how much power your car makes on the dyno if you're laying on the floor dead before you get to enjoy it so hopefully uh, this isn't something that we will ever have to address again